By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon Mohammed Duji the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. And it's now my pleasure to present to you Georgetown's newest double Hoya, Mohammed Duji, who will deliver the commencement address. Thank you so much, Professor Rivoli, for the great introduction. And thank you, President DeJoya, for this incredible honor. I'm honored and forever grateful. Provost Groves, Secretary Matson, Dila Maida, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, and most importantly, members of the graduating class. Good afternoon, Hoyas. Congratulations, class of 2022. Allow me. <laughs> allow me to express my deepest gratitude for the honor of joining you in celebrating this pivotal moment of your lives. My name is Mohammed Duji. You can fondly call me Mo. I'm an African entrepreneur, former politician, and a philanthropist. I'm also a father of three amazing children and a proud Hoya. Two decades ago, I sat right where you are, dressed in cap and gown, overflowing with new ideas, financial models, business theories. Like you, I was ready to take on the world. The only question was, would the world be ready for me? In 98, I packed my newly printed diploma and boarded a plane back to East Africa where my father ran a commodities trading house. In the next two decades, I transformed the business into one of the largest homegrown companies in East and Central Africa, with 35,000 employees and annual revenues over $2 billion. Many of you hear this, and it reinforces the burning question, is the world ready for you? Now that I stand on the other side of the podium, after years of experience, I can tell you that is the wrong question to ask. It leads us to believe that we have any real control over the world. Instead, today, I offer you the same advice that I would give myself 24 years ago. The world is never about you, but it should always concern you. I learned the lesson when I returned to Tanzania, when I visited the rural area where I was born. I wondered the nearby villages. I realized not much had changed. The region remained stuck at the same poverty level and isolation over the years. One day, I saw an old man kneeling on the path. He was using a plate to scoop dirty water from puddles into a bucket. He explained that the entire village had little to no access to clean water. So this is the water they drank. In all honesty, I did not believe him. Were we really this far behind? I walked into a small hut and I saw children drinking yellow water from PET, used PET bottles. After quick research, I learned that three out of 10 children in Tanzania were dying of waterborne diseases. I couldn't shake the sinking feeling that it was more than just a disparity between America and Tanzania. It was entirely a different world. Today, when I think back to those children, I think of my own children and how much I love them. I know that every parent here loves their children just as much as I love mine. And I refuse to believe that the life of a child in Washington, D.C. is more precious than a life of a child in Africa. A life is equal to a life, no matter what. My own mother endured 18 hours My own mother endured 18 hours of labor as I struggled with an umbilical cord wrapped around my neck with the nearest hospital hours away. I was delivered on a dinner table in a mud and plastered house. The doctor predicted that one of us 
if not both, would die during the birth. I thought, what had kept me from becoming a statistic? What kept me alive? It was the strength of my mother and the midwife and the community prayers. It was my father who provided for us and protected our home. It was the community that kept me alive. That is why, despite our differences, I firmly believe we are all connected by this community. One that is rooted past generations of warriors and one that will endure through countless generations to come. I have my own pride and proof in this community because my own daughter just completed her first year at Georgetown and today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Naila. Like many parents here today, I worry about the challenges facing your generation. Today's world makes it easier to forget our community. New apps offer simulations of human connection, but make us feel more isolated. Technology is advancing, but our understanding of each other is moving opposite direction. You can sleep five feet away from a roommate, yet still feel more distant than two isolated villages in Tanzania. So when we get lost, how do we find the natural path back to the community? You already have the answer. It comes from the Jesuit phrase outlined in Georgetown's mission statement, Cura Personalis. Care of the person, at Georgetown we're defined by a profound sense of solidarity and responsibility for one another. Cura Personalis is rooted in devotion to the success of everyone else. In Tanzania, we commonly use a similar phrase called tuko pamoja, meaning we are together, we are community. No matter where I travel, from rural Tanzania to London to right here in DC, I'm reminded that the values of Kura Personalis and tuko pamoja transcend languages, politics, religions, and cultures. The need for community is universal because it brings responsibility and purpose to our lives. Beyond your scholarship, you have fulfilled the spirit of togetherness through your volunteer work, your service groups, your advocacy and social justice clubs, and your mentorship of others. You have already made your community proud through your tireless dedication and work just to make it here. But remember, it wasn't you alone. When we focus only on ourselves, we lose sight of our community and eventually we lose sight of our most precious investment, our time with each other. I learned about the true value of time as an investment from my father. My father was a commodities trade man. Growing up, I, I became his 12-year-old assistant in missions to China and Hong Kong. In heavy, if heavy snow canceled a flight leaving Beijing, he refused to waste another moment in the airport. So I carried heavy trunks full of product samples into overcrowded trains. My father used time to outcompete his peers. He would skip meals and drive trucks across country through the night in order to make deals. When I got to Georgetown, I sensed his competitive, productive energy among my classmates. As you all know, four years here never seems like enough time. Students are constantly on the hunt for internships, relationships, or the top grades in the class. Like a game of chess, you're always planning several moves ahead. You don't come to Georgetown just to be a pawn in life. You come here to move pawns, to analyze players, and master the game. However, collaborating with classmates taught me that competition and challenging one another can coexist with tolerance and solidarity. In fact, we actually expand our knowledge together. Living in Georgetown's multi-faith community and studying theology instilled the lesson in a profound way. As a Muslim born to a conservative family, I'm grateful that the Jesuit culture deepened my religious tolerance, understanding, and solidarity. To quote the wise Islamic figure, Imam Ali said, either he's your brother in faith or your brother in mankind. One day, some of you will carry the same values of Kura Personalis and Tuko Pomoja over to Congress, to Wall Street, or even the White House. 
As for me, it comes back to the old man on the road in my hometown, drinking contaminated water. Because in the hut he told me the Minister of Water was also the Member of Parliament of a town that had the dirtiest water. I felt a calling to act. The men suggested that I run for Parliament, so that is exactly what I did. But as you say in American politics, certain factors affected my electability. I'm not an indigenous African. I was picking an underdog fight with a government minister. Still nothing could stop me. I was not running just to be someone important. I was running to change things. As it turns out, I won the primary election with 90% of the vote. However, as it's in America, internal party politics can be contentious and complicated. And ultimately, I was not granted the nomination. But my story doesn't end here. I embraced the fact that there were forces that I had no control over. I moved back to Dar and took over my father's trading house, METL Group. I combined the economic models I gained at Georgetown with memories of the old men on the road and the rural communities that comprise the majority of Tanzanians. I understood these people. They voted for me. I knew I could still make a change. Most Tanzanians earned a couple of dollars a day, and those precious dollars allocated to basic necessities like food, water, clothing. So that's how we developed the driving force behind METL's manufacturing activities to provide basic quality products at an affordable price. Today our identity as the people's brand comes from the fact that we touch nearly every point in the lives of Tanzanians. From the first cup of tea in the morning to the soap they bathe with, the kanga fabric they wear, the oil, flour, sugar and rice they eat, the water and colas they drink, the detergent they do laundry with, the bicycles they ride to work on, and the candles they put out at night before they sleep. We manufacture all these products. My products didn't enter Tanzanians' home by luck. I got there by understanding and prioritizing their needs first. Class of 2022, remember this. Accepting that life is not about you is not a barrier to achieving your own goals. In fact, it's your best tool. At 29, or 29 years old, I ran for parliament again. I won again, but this time I was actually elected. I wasn't an experienced politician, but I knew that this platform would give me the opportunity I needed to make a difference. So I invested personal profits into public development, we drilled wells to increase water accessibility, we built secondary schools and saw enrollment go up by 90%. We fought malaria, cataract, and HIV. Today, although I'm no longer a politician, I continue development work across Tanzania through the Modeuji Foundation. Once we embrace the reality that the outcomes in our lives are truly in the hands of others, we become motivated to understand each other. We become better stewards of our community. By clearing paths for others, we find our own. I have no doubt that each of you will follow your unique paths in service to the highest level. But remember, and know this, when you reach that level, that's when it's easiest to forget how much you need your community. I would like to leave you with one final story. Four years ago, I was getting out of the car at the gym. It was five in the morning. I had no security detail. A group of men pulled up behind me in a black SUV and fired gunshots in the air. Rough hands threw me into the back of a car. I was stripped, my wrists and ankles tied. I was driven to an unknown location and locked into a room. For the next nine days, I was blindfolded, bound by ankles and wrists and beaten. With my senses deprived, I lost all awareness of time and space. In that moment, I was as vulnerable as the time I was born, blind and fighting for my life. I had created billions of dollars and won a national election, but what did it matter? After nine agonizing days, I was driven to a random location and set free. It was determined that my release was encouraged by immense global outcry, media, press, social networks, covering the kidnapping, 
and pleaded for my freedom. Friends wrote letters to the government. Even our Honorable Georgetown President De Joya reached out on my behalf. I'm forever grateful. Even after all my accomplishments, I needed my community just as much as I needed them at birth. I truly believe it was not just an act of God, but also the prayers, tears, and concern of the people that saved my life. Class of 2022, today is a high point that you have anticipated. But it is impossible to anticipate the real twists and turns of life. You must be fearless and perseverant. Be kind to yourself and to others. Be ethical. You will face those who want to pull you down or discourage you with their negativity. Choose to forgive. Do not dwell on adversity, but use it as a motivation to do good. Remember, Kura Personalis and Tuko Pomoja. Life is never just about you, but it should always concern you. Whose lives can you touch? Search your heart for the answer. If you combine the curiosity with the knowledge you have gained in your time here, then the world will be yours to shape. May you shine bright, conquer your fears, and leave a positive legacy in your communities. God bless you all, and God bless Georgetown University.